Hi, I'm Kiki. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to hear more about my roller coaster life. So, let me take you back to where it all started falling apart. I had been working late at the office, trying to finish up a major project. As a dedicated employee, I always put my work first, believing that it would pave the way for a bright future. Little did I know, that very commitment was about to unravel my personal life. I remember walking into our apartment that evening, tired, but excited to see Gary, my fiancé. I found him in the living room, his phone lying face up on the couch. A message notification caught my eye, from Hannah, someone he mentioned as a colleague. It read, Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Miss you. My heart sank. Something felt off, really off. Gary, I began, trying to keep my voice steady. Who's Hannah and why is she sending you these kinds of messages? He hesitated, then sighed. Kiki, I think we need to talk. That talk turned my world upside down. Gary confessed that he'd been seeing Hannah for a few months. His reasoning? You're always busy with work, Kiki. I felt lonely, and Hannah, she was there for me. The sting of betrayal was sharp, but what came next hit even harder. The next day at work, Hannah strutted up to my desk, smirking like she owned the place. Oh, Kiki, she said in a sickeningly sweet tone. I hope things aren't awkward between us. But you know, my uncle is the CEO. It would be a shame if your dedication was no longer needed here. I clenched my jaw. What do you want, Hannah? Just a few things, she replied, flipping her hair. For starters, I'd like my coffee brought to me every morning, and maybe some of those little errands you're so good at. The nerve of her. It was clear she was trying to demean me, using her so-called connection to the CEO as leverage. But I wasn't going to let her walk all over me. Not now, not ever. For the next few days, I played along, delivering her coffee, smiling through gritted teeth. All the while, my mind was racing. Gary and Hannah thought they could use me as their pawn, but they had no idea who they were messing with. One evening, as I was bringing Hannah her coffee, I overheard her on a call, bragging about some lavish party she threw using company funds. That's when it hit me. Hannah wasn't just a homewrecker. She was a thief, using her uncle's company as her personal piggy bank. And Gary, he kept trying to talk to me, sending me texts saying how sorry he was, that he made a mistake. But sorry wasn't going to cut it. Not after what he did. I started to notice the little things, like receipts for expensive gifts, dinners, all paid for by Gary. It seemed Hannah was burning a hole in his wallet, and he was too smitten to see it. It was time to take action. I began by gathering evidence. Those overheard conversations, the extravagant expenses Hannah was racking up, I documented everything. And as for Gary? Well, he was about to learn a hard lesson about loyalty and consequences. I knew what I had to do. I was going to expose them both, but not in a way anyone would expect. This was just the beginning. The stage was set, and I was ready to turn the tables. Stay tuned to see how this all unfolds. After playing the submissive employee for a while, I started my plan of revenge. The first part was all about messing with Hannah's head. I sent her these fancy, over-the-top gift baskets at work. Only thing was, these gifts weren't what they seemed. I laced them with sugar, a metaphor for the sweet revenge brewing. Kiki, this is too much. You really shouldn't have, Hannah said as she opened another absurdly extravagant basket. Just showing my appreciation, I replied with a smile, hiding my true intent. Now, on to Gary. His financial world was about to crumble, and I was the architect of his downfall. Hannah had him wrapped around her finger, spending his money like water. Designer clothes, expensive dinners, you name it. The guy was drowning in debt and too love-struck to see it. One evening, as I was organizing Gary's receipts, more like gathering evidence, he walked in, looking distressed. Kiki, I'm sorry. I've made a huge mistake. I was stupid and I don't know what I was thinking, he pleaded. I looked up, feigning concern. What's wrong, Gary? It's my credit card bill. It's through the roof. I don't know how I'm going to pay it off. I shrugged. Maybe Hannah can help. After all, she helped you spend it. Gary was silent. He knew he messed up, but pride wouldn't let him admit it fully. As I dug deeper, I found more dirt on Hannah. Turns out, she wasn't just using Gary's money. She was siphoning funds from the company, too. Fancy parties personal expenses, you name it, all charged to the company. I remember smirking to myself, thinking how perfect this was. 
Hannah wasn't just a homewrecker, she was a fraudster, and I had all the proof I needed. But I had to be smart about this. No way was I going to just hand over the evidence and be done with it. This was personal. As days passed, I watched Gary struggle with his finances. He sold his car, downgraded his apartment, but it wasn't enough. Hannah's demands just kept piling up. And Gary, well, he was too far gone to see the light. You have to help me, Kiki, Gary begged one day. I'm drowning here. I looked at him, feeling a mix of pity and disgust. You made your bed, Gary. Now lie in it. That's when I knew I was ready to make my move. The stage was set for the grand reveal. Hannah and Gary were going to get what was coming to them, and I was going to enjoy every second of it. Revenge is a dish best served cold, and I was ready to chill it to the bone. My discovery of Hannah's embezzlement and her uncle's involvement was the jackpot I needed. They say knowledge is power, and armed with this explosive information, I was about to shake the very foundations of their deceitful empire. One morning, as I walked into the office, I could feel the weight of the secret I was carrying. But I knew that timing was everything. I had to be smart, methodical. So I started by planting seeds of doubt. I'd leave anonymous tips on the desks of certain key employees, hints about misused company funds and unexplained expenses. It wasn't long before whispers began to circulate. In the break room, I overheard conversations. Have you seen the latest expense reports? It's like a shopping spree with company money. Yeah, and I heard Hannah bragging about her new designer bag. Seems a bit fishy, don't you think? Hannah was oblivious to the storm brewing around her. She continued her little power trips, but her arrogance was about to be her downfall. As for Gary, he was still trying to worm his way back into my good graces, oblivious to the fact that I knew about his financial desperation. He was drowning in debt, all thanks to Hannah's lavish demands. But I had no sympathy left for him. Finally, the moment came to strike. I had gathered enough evidence-detailed expense reports, receipts, even some incriminating emails. It was a masterpiece of evidence. I sent it all anonymously to the board of directors, ensuring that it would land in the right hands at the right time. The fallout was spectacular. The next board meeting was a scene straight out of a drama. The CEO, Hannah's so-called uncle, was confronted with the evidence. The board members were in uproar. This is unacceptable. Embezzling company funds for personal use? We need to take immediate action. This reflects poorly on the entire company. Hannah was called into an emergency meeting. I watched from a distance as she walked in, confident and smug, and walked out, pale and shaken. She was fired on the spot, her world crumbling around her as she realized the extent of her exposure. But it didn't stop there. The CEO, caught up in the scandal, faced legal charges. His reputation, built over years, was now in tatters. The company was in disarray, trying to salvage what was left of its integrity. And in the midst of this chaos, I stood, a silent observer. I had set the wheels in motion, but now I stepped back, letting the dominoes fall where they may. It was a turning point for me. Seeing the consequences of their actions unfold, I felt a sense of closure. Hannah and her uncle got what they deserved, and Gary was left to pick up the pieces of his own shattered illusions. I learned something valuable about power and justice. Sometimes the best way to fight back is not with loud confrontations, but with the quiet strength of truth. The tables had turned, and I was no longer the victim in this story. As the corporate scandal I'd exposed started unraveling publicly, it felt like a tidal wave washing over the entire company. Every headline screamed about the embezzlement, the drugs, Hannah, and her uncle's downfall. And amidst all this chaos, something unexpected happened. My reputation at the company began to soar. Colleagues who once overlooked me now regarded me with newfound respect. They didn't know I was the whistleblower, but they saw my resilience, my ability to stay focused, even as the company weathered its worst storm. But with the rise came an uncomfortable blast from the past. Gary, seeing his world crumble as his debts from catering to Hannah's demands piled up, decided to turn back to me. His messages went from apologies to desperate pleas. Kiki, I'm drowning here. I need you. Please, can we just talk? Each message he sent twisted a knot in my stomach, but the Kiki who would have felt sympathy for him was long gone. This Kiki knew better. This Kiki had learned that some bridges, once burned, couldn't be rebuilt. So I shut him out, blocked his number, his social media, every possible line of communication. It was tough, 
but necessary. A chapter closed for good. In the eye of this storm, I found an unexpected calm in Jamie. Hannah's half-brother was as different from her as night and day. Respected in the company, kind, and above all honest, he reached out to me one day, extending a hand of friendship that soon blossomed into something more. Kiki, you've been through so much. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here, Jamie said one evening as we stayed late at the office, wrapping up the mess the scandal had left. That offer turned into coffee sessions, long walks after work, and heartfelt conversations. With Jamie, I found a connection I'd long thought impossible. He understood the pain of betrayal, the complexities of family ties, and the sweet relief of finding truth amidst lies. As we grew closer, I could feel a shift within me. The pain and betrayal that had clouded my heart were giving way to something lighter, something that felt a lot like hope. Jamie's presence in my life was like a soothing balm, healing wounds I thought were permanent. Our relationship was the talk of the office, but for once, the gossip didn't bother me. With Jamie by my side, I felt stronger, more confident, like I could face anything life threw at me. The downfall of the deceitful, Hannah and her uncle, even Gary, it wasn't just about their descent into chaos. It was about my rise from the ashes of their betrayal. It was about finding respect, finding strength, and unexpectedly, finding love. As I looked towards the future, one thing was clear. This wasn't just the end of a tumultuous chapter. It was the beginning of a whole new story. A story where I wasn't just a survivor, but a victor. With Jamie's hand in mine, I was ready to turn the page and start anew. The final chapter of my story is one of justice and new beginnings. Hannah, the mastermind behind all the deceit and manipulation, finally faced the consequences of her actions. She was behind bars, a fitting end for someone who thought she was untouchable. Her uncle, once a respected CEO, now had his career in complete shambles. The mighty had fallen, and their fall was a public spectacle. As for me, Kiki, I emerged from the chaos not just unscathed, but stronger, more respected. My colleagues, who once saw me as just another employee, now recognized me for my integrity and resilience. It was gratifying to know that my determination to do what's right had not gone unnoticed. But more than the professional accolades, it was the personal growth that meant the most to me. I had transformed from a betrayed fiancé into a strong, independent woman. I had survived the toxicity that tried to drown me and emerged victorious, a survivor of the worst kind of betrayal. And then there was Jamie. Our relationship, born from the ashes of a scandal, had flourished into something beautiful. He wasn't just a partner. He was my confidant, my pillar of strength. With him, I discovered a love that was honest, supportive, and kind. Everything my past relationship wasn't. We celebrated our love quietly, away from the prying eyes of the world. It was a simple celebration, but it symbolized so much more. It was the triumph of love over deceit, of integrity over corruption. As I stood there with Jamie, looking into his eyes, I felt a wave of contentment wash over me. This was my new beginning, a chapter where I wasn't just a bystander in my story, but the author of my destiny. I never thought I'd find someone like you, especially not in the midst of all that chaos, I told Jamie. He smiled, his eyes full of affection. Life has a funny way of bringing us what we need, Kiki. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. That moment, with Jamie by my side, was a testament to the fact that even in the darkest times, there's always a silver lining. I had found mine in the most unexpected place in time. As I reflect on my journey, I realize it's not just about what I went through. It's about what I became because of it. I'm no longer just Kiki, the woman who was betrayed. I'm Kiki, the survivor, the fighter, the woman who stood up against injustice and won. This story, my story, is a reminder that no matter how tough things get, there's always a way out. There's always hope for a better tomorrow. And sometimes, just sometimes, life gives you a second chance at happiness. As Jamie and I walked hand in hand, ready to face whatever the future held, I knew one thing for certain. This wasn't just the end of a chapter. It was the beginning of a whole new, beautiful story. A story of love, resilience, and the sweet taste of justice served. And that's the wrap on Kiki's tale of strength, resilience, and justice. But before you go, I've got a question that I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on. 
If you were in Kiki's shoes, would you have taken the same path of exposing the truth, knowing it might lead to public scandal and personal upheaval? Or would you have chosen a different way to handle the betrayal? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm eager to see the different perspectives. And hey, if you enjoyed this journey with Kiki, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more stories. Your support means a lot, and there's plenty more where this came from. Thanks for watching.